you ever wondered if a small act of kindness, a small mitzvah, can ever snowball into something huge? Have you ever done anything that presented itself as small or insignificant and really, over time, became such a great act? Is there a value to a small mitzvah? Is there such a thing as a small mitzvah? Is there such a thing as a big mitzvah? What is the value of it? Maybe you've wondered about those things and so have I. And today I'm going to share with you insights on all of these ideas as well as provide us with more clarity on what is a small mitzvah, on what is a big mitzvah. And would like to start with sharing a personal story of mine. Years ago, more than a decade ago, when I wasn't observant yet, I was listening to lectures by Reverend Esther Bela Schwartz, and she's from Mansi. You could catch her on TorahAnyTime.com. And I listened to her, and I loved her lectures, and I really enjoyed them. Turned out that her lectures became my notes, and I actually say a lot of things the way she does, and she is my personal Rebbitzin now. However, someone who recorded her lectures just probably meant to put it out into the public to have some inspiration going. But now look at 10 plus years now. I have so many of her notes, so many of her ideas and lectures written out, helping me for first and foremost, which I really hope I, I can make the most out of her teachings, and also helping my family and now helping others. When I published these classes, many of her teachings through these classes on Torah, uh, on YouTube.com. So I really, really hope that you can see in, a, in this small example how someone who gave classes on Torah anytime without me even seeing her video, after a few years I got a chance to see her, her video, but I didn't know who she was, but I just liked the, the title of the lecture. And it really just grasped me, grasped my attention. And now here we are living her teachings, trying to study them, trying to have it navigate our world successfully by following its teachings. So what is a small mitzvah? What is a big mitzvah? We're going to review um, Pirkei Avot, where it says in Perik Beis, Mishnah Aleph. This is what it says. Be careful with what appears to be an easy mitzvah as you are with a big, complex mitzvah because you have no idea what the reward is. We have no idea what the reward of a mitzvah is. It could be something small or something big. Big meaning complex, time-consuming. Maybe involves a lot of our money and a lot of our efforts. So this is advice of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi. A mitzvah is alive. A mitzvah is like a seed. It sprouts and it gives life to so much out there. And it continues. It continues uh, to snowball, to become bigger and bigger. A mitzvah keeps growing and you never know what it will lead to. Hashem keeps track of every mitzvah. There's an idea called catch the kedusha, catch the holiness. Now, you could be thinking to yourself, oh, so I do a mitzvah and it benefits me, benefits me in the long run, and may benefit my children, my grandchildren. Sometimes we do mitzvot and, and we see good people getting hurt or good people having so many challenges and we wonder, there's such good people. Why are they being challenged this way? They do so many good things to the world, to the community, to their family. And um, why do they have to suffer all this? First of all, we must understand everybody has their own mission in life. And second of all, uh, we must understand that Hashem gives everyone what they need. Any challenges, if you have a challenge, you are made to overcome it. Hashem gives you the tools first before He gives you the challenges. And we must remind ourselves that sometimes we see how a Yeshua salvation comes. It's because somebody prayed on our behalf, somebody did a certain mitzvah on our behalf, and it actually 
benefited us in our lifetime. So when you do a mitzvah with kavana, with concentration, with thought, with thought about what you're doing, you're beautifying the mitzvah. Someone can catch the kedusha, the holiness, in a totally different place. So the example Rabbi Tim Schwartz gives, Rabbi Tzinastabil Schwartz gives, is you are trying to beautify the mitzvah of honoring Shabbat. So you not only are you trying to buy beautiful captain, um, napkin holders or, and napkins and maybe chair covers, uh, beautiful candlesticks, you can beautify the mitzvah of honoring Shabbos without actually it costing a lot of money. You're just trying to really beautify the table and the whole um, aura of Shabbat. And that's really get, involving a lot of thought and effort on your part. And someone in Argentina, let's say, had a whole schedule on Friday afternoon, and now all of a sudden she decides to cancel the plans and bring in Shabbat early and light her famous candlesticks that her grandmother gave her. So why did all of a sudden she have this idea? Because, Rabbi Tish Schwartz explains, you, she caught your kadusha, she caught your holiness. So just because you're doing something in the privacy of your own home, you can actually have it affect someone on an entire different scale across the world and uh, a different time period, and it's really called catching the kadusha. Okay, so mitzvot we know are not limited by time or space. Only Hashem can do everything for everyone. So what happens when you see a problem in the world and you want to do something about it, but you don't have the connections, you don't have the money, you're not a philanthropist, and you're not a politician? What happens? What happens is something very important. Let's say there's intermarriage in the world, and there is, unfortunately, Jews marrying non-Jews. So there's intermarriage and you're concerned about the problem. So what can you do? You can enhance your own life. You can learn and you could be more and you can enhance your own marriage and have more shallow, more peace with your marriage and have a beautiful marriage. When you're working on yourself, you're actually benefiting the whole world and we know that. Maybe you can't do anything practical and specific However, somebody else can. And when you're doing that, when you're beautifying your own marriage and you're working on yourself, you're giving strength to those people who can make it happen physically, right? They who, who, can, who are the movers and the shakers in a physical sense, who can make uh, fix the problem. Maybe there's an, an organization that works on this. So you're giving that organization that strength simply by your kadusha, simply on you, working on yourself and we can all do that so by living my life to the best of my ability serving Hashem with happiness joy and gratitude uh, that I am blessed that I am blessed to be part to be a member of his special people I am saturating the air with Kedusha and that is my practical tip to you so whenever you feel as though you're not accomplishing anything you're not feeling well you're not into it you can't do anything physically or you just feel down and you don't feel like you're doing much. Remember, by living my life to the best of my ability, serving Hashem with happiness, joy, and gratitude, that I am blessed to be a member of His special people. I am saturating the air with Kedusha. So that all of the isolated people who can physically do something, physically, to fix the problem, will have the invisible support that I created. And we can infuse the strength into this environment. When we do a mitzvah, we open up the channels of bracha in Shemaim. So Hashem can send out, send down lots of bracha into the world. People have success, people get married, people, those, those women who can't get pregnant, get pregnant, people recover from sicknesses. Because when people do the right thing, when people do mitzvot, what happens is it benefits the whole world. But when a person, God forbid, doesn't do a mitzvah, it also affects the world negatively. We know this for a fact. After 120 years, a person will go to the next world. There will be a scale, a verot versus mitzvot. Uh, the scale will be sins versus mitzvot. And we want mitzvot to be, you know, really heavy with a lot of our mitzvot, mitzvot or good deeds. For people such as you and me, there will be many situations and mitzvot that we did that we don't even know that we did. We affect people. 
We don't even know why, because we were thinking about being helpful. We were thinking about being kind and doing good to the world. And we, we'll see these people in situations that we don't even recognize. And Hashem is going to say, yeah, that's what you did. And I'm so proud of you. So people, sometimes in this world, this is the world of falsehood. In the real, we will enter the real world after 120 years. And there's that there's only truth there. We see in the political world, people get credit for the things that they didn't even do. Uh, and life in general, this is the world of falsehood. Okay? In the world of truth, you can't convince anyone. Hashem sees and knows everything. So in the next world, we'll be able to see what we did, even if we don't know we did it. Okay? So only Hashem can calculate reward and punishment. Only Hashem knows what grew out of what we did. If you do a mitzvah to others or only to Hashem, the mitzvah will snowball and benefit others for all eternity. So I just as my big uh, reminder, we have to be able to, to know that we have to be on high alert to do as much mitzvah as we can to make to take advantage of these opportunities. However, remember, it's all that you can. If you can't handle it, don't do it. If you're not doing things with a smile, you're not doing things calmly or thought, or running around like a chicken without a head because of you doing so much, you're probably not doing as much as you think you are. And maybe you are losing out more than you're benefiting. Why? Because when we're rushing, when we're not thinking, we end up, Maybe saying or doing things that we will regret. And we don't want to do it that way. We want to put thought into what we're doing. Even if it's the example she gave is putting socks into the hamper. Somebody else's socks. The socks are right there. Or the dirty laundry is right there. The towel's right there. They, they don't see the hamper, your family. And you know what? Do it without saying a word. L'shem. This is L'shem mitzvot. I'm doing it. I'm doing it as a mitzvah and you don't have to talk about it and it's a, it's an ordinary thing you did it with a smile uh, you were helpful and it's a beautiful thing you just changed the whole dynamic of the world so now there are insights um, these were insights from Rabbi Yerucham Lovitz and now we're going to hear about insights uh, from Rabbi Yecheskel Levenstein on his insight and how you have to be careful with mitzvot between you and other people. So why did Hashem create the world? Hashem created the world so that people can be happy. He created us in such a way that we really, we can only enjoy something if we earn it, right? So the real place is the next world, not this world. The, this world is all about hard work and earning our share in the world to come. Hashem created this world in order for us to receive reward. That's the whole point. We need to earn our share. We want to work hard, right? Is it a mitzvah to make Hashem happy? Yes, absolutely. Hashem is, is happy when He rewards us. Especially in our time, when the vast majority of people of the world does not want to do anything with Hashem, even when Hashem personally introduced Himself during this corona pandemic, you know, it's not about the mask. It's not about social distancing. I'm here to tell you, let's make this world a better place. And the vast majority of people ignored Hashem, but that doesn't make him go away. But, Hash, but, but look at us, us good people. We are trying to work so hard to do the right thing. And look at us, despite the circumstances, despite the challenges and the difficulties, it is hard to serve him. Despite that, we're persevering and we're trying so, so hard. And this means so much more to Hashem than the previous generations, so much more. The happiness we are giving to Hashem means so much more to Hashem than the, than the generations that passed us. So is there such a thing as a small inconsequential mitzvah? Absolutely not. There's no such thing. You cannot give value or um, uh, a rank to a mitzvah. This is big, this is great, this is wonderful. It's the way you do it. The way you do a mitzvah is all that, that is all that counts. We must remember to stay plugged into our lives, to be able aware of what we're doing on a normal, ordinary day. We will be creating such spiritual magnificence that our spiritual brain will never comprehend. We're not able to understand what we do. Why does the Torah not teach anything about the next world? Because we just don't understand it. It's like teaching 
you something in a different language. You won't understand it. So Hashem says, why teach it if you're not going to benefit from it, if you're not really going to understand it? So that's really, really important for us to know. We need to earn our share here. And the reason why, when I do something, I don't see my automatic reward. First of all, this world is not the place of reward. The place of reward, reward is the next world. And the reason why I don't see my reward right away is because if I see it, I'm not going to stop doing it. And I have to earn it, which means that if I don't... I, if I see everything that I do and see the benefits right away, I'm not really earning it because I'm not working for it. I see the benefits. There's no free will involved. It's just a given. It's like a robotic movement. I know I'm going to get it, right? So Hashem says, listen, you have to search for me. You have to have a relationship with me. Do my mitzvot. Get close to me and there's going to be reward. Okay, so ordinary everyday acts can be something so huge. So, so huge. It's all in the way you do it. So what are some examples I can share with you? Greeting somebody saying, good morning, I am so happy to see you. You don't know what you did to their, their day. You don't know what you did to their mood. You don't know what they're going through. We really don't know. Besides our home, we don't know what's going on in our neighbor's house. We just are not meant to know and we just don't know. So greeting someone, you don't know what you just did to their whole day. Okay, another example is you listening to a lecture. I gave my own personal example. You may change the life of your friend with what you say. I have many things that I have heard people say that changed my life. It's like a one sentence. It changed my whole life in a big way, I will say. It affected me in a big way. So you can't say, oh, I didn't say much. The way, uh, the way you say something, what you say, you can really build or break someone. We have children who remember in their 40s, their 50s, what their parents used to tell them when they were small because words do affect us. So you, you don't have to do anything big to affect anyone. Hopefully it's only positive and good things. Some other examples are how does an Orthodox Jew behave, right? They returned a dollar uh, they that wasn't theirs. They put their shopping cart away. They waited patiently in line. This is what we do every single day. And you did it with happiness and you did it calmly. And people see, oh, that's a Jew. That's an Orthodox Jew. And we're an example. You don't know what you just did to the impression you give to the world, which is only hopefully good. I hope these insights have helped you as they helped me. May we do mitzvot in a beautiful way. Be'ezrat Hashem. Leah Bramov, being and becoming. Appreciating the insights of Rabbi Esther Bela Schwartz. Awakening awareness of your greatness and potential.